transcript of the Women's Sexuality Conference by that now organization, the National Organization of Women put up. And I always say the first and last sex conference that now ever had. And it's to explore, define, and celebrate our own sexuality. And so we had a speak out on Saturday and where, you know, a group of women spoke out about their own sexuality. And then on Sunday, Betty showed the slides of all the women's genitalia. And she got a standing ovation after that. So it says, June 9 and 10, 1973, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we met in this high school, and it was a huge turnout. Everybody was interested in sex. And as I look at this, I go, wow. I, you know, this I haven't seen. I'm sharing this for the first time right now. Now, this was Betty's first, like, public speech. <laughs> you know what I mean? Betty didn't go to school. Betty didn't, you know, wasn't on the debate team. This is her first. So, okay, I'll read my favorite lines. No, read the whole thing. The whole thing? The whole thing, top to bottom. Okay. Well, I did that drawing and I had a real struggle with it. I've been working on this whole concept of a new image. As an artist, I've been drawing the human body for a long time. I was totally hooked on the classical image of women. You know, the curves and all that. Well, fine, that's one image, but that was the only image available, so I really had to do a lot of experimenting and a lot of exploring. During the next two days, I'd like to know how you feel about the drawing. Well, <laughs> it was rejected, and that was because I had muscles on the woman and I did the, the new, it's, well, it's the, it's a takeoff on, on Michelangelo, uh, Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, and she's actually in front of a vulva and her head is actually the position of the clitoris. And it's like, I thought it was fabulous. <laughs> nope, they didn't use it. I did alter the genitals on the poster. They are smaller and less phallic than the drawing on the flyer. They, um, I guess that was one of the complaints. Anyway, it was a risk. I stuck my neck out and a lot of people didn't like it. I'm sorry, but I do think we ought to try to experiment with new images. I've been experimenting with my own body and I have really altered the shape and the structure in the last couple of years. I think this is terrific. Now this is one of my favorite lines. I'm so nervous, it's incredible. Sweat is running down my side, my heart is pounding and I think I'm lubricating parentheses, laughter and applause. <laughs> so she had him, what, five lines in, <laughs> you know? I've been going through some very incredible trips in the last few years with sex. First of all, I'm a total sex freak. A few years ago, people said, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a pervert. I want to be one of those sex fiends. I was so straight and so turned off and so rigid and in my proper role for so many years that after I got a divorce back in 65, I cut loose and I continue that process right on. Now I'm indeed outrageous, but it's really a lot of fun. I feel better than I have ever felt and my sex life is incredible. I'm probably hooked on my vibrator. <laughs> I'm probably going steady with it, but I'm really worried about the latter. I don't know. That's the latest feedback I get. You're hooked on your vibrator, and I say, listen, what can I say? I've got four with me at the conference. What can I say? Four. Not one. I've got four vibrators, and I mean, it's like a groove. <laughs> I change them over. Actually, the reason I do that is that they get hot, and you have to change over to the next one. Wait till we start designing vibrators. It'll be a trip. I went through all the standard sexual lifestyles, from abstinence, which is familiar to all of us, to marriage, which turned out to be for me abstinence, laughter and applause. <laughs> then I couldn't even masturbate. I sneaked. I was such a sneaky masturbator. I remember that I would get into bed and wonder if tonight was going to be the night. I would put on my diaphragm and I'd wait and nothing would happen. Or if it did happen, I wouldn't get off. Then I would wait until I heard my husband's breathing. He was asleep now. And I would get the covers up and hold, and I would demonstrate, I would hold the covers up and, and hold my breath and go, and then I would go, well, I'm holding my breath. I'm, it says demonstrates masturbating while holding breath. And then the orgasm was like, ha, 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 
and exhale. I was conditioning myself to have these little tense mini cums. It was incredible. I did that for five years. Wow. I did one of those just the other day to see what it was like, and it was awful. I had a pain in my right side. So from marriage, I went in just round the clock promiscuity. It was great, and I spent two years in bed with just everybody I could find, anybody I could find. Through the group sex experience, I got turned on to making it with women, and I'm still very tender in that area. I'm shy, and I get embarrassed easily, and, I'm, and I fumble. I don't know what to say, but, but that's okay. It's a beautiful trip. I'm so happy with the feeling of having sexuality available to me with women and men. It's a trip. I don't know where this is going to go. I may end up preferring animals or plants, but I want to try everything, absolutely everything. So all these different experiments I've been running certainly have changed my head and I think most importantly changed my body. Now if, I have, if I've got a problem, I check in with my body. Never mind my head. My head has fucked me up for so many years. <laughs> I can't tell you. I no longer think my way through a mechanism because that doesn't work for me. I stop and I feel and say, where is your body and what's happening and what are the feelings you're getting? I'm learning how to trust those sensations. I'm really learning how to breathe. I'm learning how to move. I'm learning how to have better sex. I'm learning how to have all kinds of orgasms. I'm learning how to feed myself. I'm learning how to eliminate what I eat. I'm learning how to clean my body. I'm taking the whole body trip and I'll get into that in my workshop. What I'm really excited about is a slideshow tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And I really hope that everyone shows up because a lot of energy has been put into this and I love it. It's called Establishing Aesthetics for the Female Genitals. On the poster I do, I show the genitals without pubic hair so that we could see the basic form involved. After 20 years of drawing when it came to the female nude and when it came to the genitals, I drew a triangle of hair. I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't even know what mine looked like. So I went on a little discovery trip and I looked at myself. I thought, Ugh, it looks like a chicken or something with those things hanging down. It was funny looking. That's not healthy. There's really something wrong. I've got to turn my head around. So several of us have been turning our heads around. Anyway, we're going to have a slideshow tomorrow at 11. She mentioned it twice. <laughs> and I've got some fabulous slides that were taken by the Her Story Films women. Her Story Films women. They're just great. So be here for the slideshow because they're going to walk away with a whole new feeling about female genitals. I really think female genitals are the next thing on the list. I really think it's going to do it. Applause and standing ovation. <laughs> I want individuals and I want the culture, all of society, to understand that masturbation is the foundation for all of human sexual activity. It's how we learn to like and feel and touch our genitals. It is the beginning of a lifelong experience of having pleasure in our bodies. Don't block that.